According to a consulting firm, the Indian edtech market is expected to grow over 10 times to reach the size of 5 billion US dollars by 2025. Also, the gross margin in edtech is very high as compared to other sectors. So the edtech industry looks very lucrative, right? Well, it is not. Hello friends, welcome to Unequivocally with AVK. In this video, I am going to do an industry analysis for the edtech industry in order to understand the profitability of this sector. Now there are many tools available to analyze an industry and one of them is Porter's 5 Forces Analysis. Porter's 5 Forces is a framework for analyzing a company's competitive environment. This tool makes use of 5 forces that help to determine the competitive intensity and therefore the attractiveness of an industry in terms of its profitability. According to this framework, an unattractive industry is the one in which the effect of these five forces reduces the overall profitability. So to understand whether the edtech industry is profitable or not, let's analyze how these five forces act with respect to this industry. Starting with the first, threat of new entrants. Now in my opinion, this is the most important one because it has a direct or indirect effect on other forces of this framework. New entrants are considered a threat since they can put pressure on current organizations within an industry through their desire to gain market share. This in turn puts pressure on prices, cost and rate of investment needed to sustain a business within the industry. Now in order to safeguard from this threat, existing industries try to create barriers to entry, like requirement of high capital investment, having specialist knowledge, patents, using economies of scale, technology protection, etc. So if we analyze these factors for an edtech industry, you will find that they don't require very high capital investment, there is no special knowledge that you can't acquire, no patents in education, there is no benefit of producing in large amounts, and the technology is readily available. Thus considering all this, we can say that the edtech industry has very few barriers to entry. Hence, it has an industry disadvantage since the threat of new entrants is very high. Next is competitive rivalry. As the entry barrier is less, the number of companies competing for the market share increases, leading to intense rivalry. Due to this, companies have to either keep investing money to make their products more attractive or they have to sell their products at competitive prices to stay in competition. Both of these practices lead to a reduction in profits. In India, we are seeing a rise in the number of edtech startups over the past few years, leading to intense competition in this industry. As a result, profit margins have decreased drastically. Bearing a few, the majority of edtech startups are currently grappling with massive losses and are burning cash at a fast pace. Thus, owing to intense competitive rivalry, the edtech industry has an industry disadvantage. Next up, bargaining power of customers. The bargaining power of customers is described as the ability of the customer to put a firm under pressure. The buyer's bargaining power is high if they have many alternatives and the switching cost is less. For example, in the edtech industry, there is intense competition going amongst the many competitors. And most of them are providing more or less the same product with very little differentiation. So a buyer has many alternatives to choose from for the same product. Thus, their emphasis will be on the cost. And since the cost of switching from one company's product to another is very less, a buyer can pressurize the firm to reduce the cost of the product, thus in turn reducing the profitability. So as the bargaining power of the customer is high, the edtech industry has an industry disadvantage. Now it comes to bargaining power of suppliers. Suppliers of raw materials, components, labor and services to firm can have power over the firm when there are few substitutes. For example, if you are selling a special kind of cake and there is only one person that knows how to make it, then he or she may charge excessively high prices for their services. Now in the case of edtech industry, there isn't any secret sauce or recipe for creating great products. Everything is readily available and can be easily replicated. So the bargaining power of the suppliers in edtech industry is very less. Hence we can say that the edtech industry has an industry advantage here. Finally, the last force in this framework, threat of substitutes. A substitute product uses a different approach to try and solve the same need. Now when the edtech industry came into existence, it was seen as a substitute for the traditional teaching methods. But even after much advancement, edtech is still unable to establish itself as a substitute. Today it is seen as something which can supplement the old ways of teaching. Now if edtech is going to continue as an auxiliary part, then it faces the threat from substitutes like coaching centers, 
home tuitions, private tutoring, etc. Now, locally, these substitutes can give a stiff competition, but they might not have the reach and technology that an edtech company has. Hence, in my opinion, when considering the threat of substitutes, the edtech industry has a slight advantage here. So, after analyzing the edtech industry using Proter's Five Forces framework, I give it a 2 out of 5 rating and believe that it is very difficult to grow if you are an edtech organization that is relying solely on net sales. The edtech companies that seems to be doing well are the ones that are getting a steady amount of funding. And these organizations are using this money to acquire a variety of other edtechs to diversify their portfolio and to improve the quality of their products. Basically, they are trying to create an entry barrier by increasing the initial investment required to compete with them thereby reducing competition and alternatives for a buyer. So that was my analysis of the Indian edtech industry. Do let me know if you agree or disagree with my points in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you soon with a new video.